Right, so, um, okay, so it's good evening over here, but I know some of you is good morning and good afternoon. So thank you for coming to RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020. I'm Jeffrey, I will be your host today and also tomorrow. So today we will have um, the Open Platform Final. So today is the day one, which is the first day of our competition. So we have two days. Uh, so today we will run uh, the final for the teams uh, belongs to the Open Platform. Okay, please look at the screen. I will explain a little bit on logistic, then we will start very soon. Okay, so first it's like, for all of you, maybe you are not aware, uh, let me explain a little bit about the arrangement. So um, for all of you that is outside uh, in the audience meeting room, so we have a public online meeting room, which is open for all. Okay, which is open for all. So um, not just uh, audience, but team members and also jury, if let's say, you're interested to vote, okay, you can go to uh, the public online meeting room, which is uh, in order to get the access, you just need to sign up the form that I have already like put up everywhere, like including the website. So you just need to sign up. Um, without need a uh, Zoom account, you can actually uh, access to the public online meeting room. So that is uh, for everyone to view what happened uh, for the whole, for this whole event, right? And one thing very important is like uh, throughout the whole uh, competition in every team presentation we will have certain time that we will push out the voting windows so only those people that is in the public meeting room you're able to put down uh, to cast your vote for the teams that you support right so uh, if you want to support your team please go to the public meeting room uh, view the presentation over there and wait for uh, to cast your vote right and for those uh, team that participating in today's uh, competition, so you need to aware that there is another competition meet, uh, online meeting room, which is dedicated for only the jury member and also for the current competition team. All right. So even you take part, but if it is not your turn, you are not able to enter. Right. So you will be waiting at the waiting room. But so I advise you to uh, keep closely on the progress and also the, on the timing and come in according to the instruction in the email, right? And for the jury member, so just in case that you uh, stuck in the, I'm not sure anyone stuck in the public uh, meeting room, so please join the competition meeting room, okay? So this is the place where you uh, perform your jury duty, okay? And also, um, other than this, we actually have uh, our live uh, broadcast on Facebook Live. So if you can go to our uh, Facebook page, so over there you can see it is a live broadcast over there. And also for people in China, you can visit our Bilibili live uh, broadcast as well. Right. And for the rest of you, if you need any more uh, information about the, uh, for example, the timetable and so on, you can head to our website. Right. Okay, so and final uh, reminder on the privacy. So all uh, everything over here and everything that happened will be recorded into video and this video will be published online later on. So please be careful not to accidentally turn on your webcam if you are not asked to do so, uh, especially uh, do not, do not for your time, okay, to turn on. But for all the competition, uh, team members and also for the juries when you are interacting I will advise you to turn on your webcam as well uh, for interaction okay but of course you need to be uh, careful on your privacy as well okay so these are all the logistics so let me explain a little bit what is uh, to expect today so we are going to run uh, both category in open platform so we have open category which is um, uh, college and above and also we have the junior category which is uh, under 19 years old so over here uh, congratulations to all these 14 teams so we have 17 in open category and 17 in junior category that successfully uh, passed through the technical video challenge got selected and now they are fighting for the uh, award in the final so later on we will follow the sequence and we are not following this sequence because this is just the uh, uh, the list of the finalists, we are going to follow the sequence uh, according to the team sequence that they draw during the setup uh, day. So which means uh, we have no problem on the sequence and everything is totally random. Okay, 
So hopefully the judge will aware on this. So the actual sequence that is going to happen later on. So just in case that you miss up with the team, please refer to the uh, final time schedule that I sent in the email. Right. So that will be the correct sequence. So uh, make sure that you match the correct team with the score. Okay. So later on, we will start with the junior category. Then we will go to the open category. Okay. The next one, the next slide, I will explain more detail on the uh, schedule. So today's schedule is like this. So I will have another four minutes for me to introduce everyone. And it, actually, I need to introduce the jury as well to the audience. But uh, due to the time constraint, I'm going to do it very fast. But after 12 team uh, presentation, we will have an open ceremony. So during the open ceremony, I will uh, spend more time to introduce all the jury. And also maybe we can have some interaction over there. Uh, later on after the 12th team and then for the 13th and 14th team uh, the competition will happen uh, after the open opening ceremony is because like they are actually uh, on UTC 7 time zone minus 7 time zone so um, they are going to present after the opening ceremony but today the whole uh, jury duty will be cover the all the 14 teams so for the jury member please understand this is uh, the sequence so uh, you can arrange how you want to put in the marks and when to put in marks. But don't worry because like until the end of the event today, we still have a day for you to consider uh, what to put in the marks because like we only do uh, the final sc score calculation tomorrow. Okay, okay. I have three more minutes. Right. So um, just very quickly, let me introduce the jury for today. So we have Luca and also Amy. So both... Uh, will take up the uh, duty on chief jury member. Okay, so Luca for the open category and Amy for the junior category. So if you have any things that you need to refer, especially for all the jury member that first time you do the uh, review on the team, if you have any question after this uh, presentation, you can actually like discuss with both chief. Okay, and then we have uh, several member of uh, jury member that I'm not going to list down uh, the name here because due to the time, but I will introduce you more later on uh, during the opening ceremony. Okay, right. So that's all for my um, introduction for this morning. So we have about one more minutes to go. So I will get ready to the competition room and then we will call in the first team. Okay, so David, I will pass the screen to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have one more minutes to go. So I hope all the team member for the first presenting team, please join the competition meeting room and wait in the waiting room. Yes, team uh, 10107, they have already in the waiting room. Okay, right. Okay, so one more minute to go, then we will start. So for uh, the jury, maybe, oh yeah, for the jury, maybe you want to turn off your webcam for the time being. Okay, let the teams have the webcam and also to share their screen because that is what they're going to present. So if anything happen in between that you can't see or can't hear or any trouble happen, please uh, send us a message through the chat windows. And we have um, admin people that is going to help you. Okay, so let's start the first thing. Yes, David, you can let the first team in and we will start. Okay, so team number one is OPJ07 from Zhejiang Science. So now this is the open platform junior category. Team OPJ07 Zhejiang Science, you may start now.
Please start your presentation. Hello. Presentation, yes. Yes. Um, we will be start. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me introduce our service robot system for hospital material receiving and distribution by EMS coronavirus vaccine. This system stimulates the intervention of the service robot in fighting against the coronavirus vaccine and quickly reduce manual verification and distribution of anti-epidemic materials and they can use the robots to receive and then store such materials to the maximum extent thereby reducing the cross infection of coronavirus Look, the thermobile service robot is used to build a map of common room in the area to be served so as to prepare for the subsequent coordinate point motion control of the robot. Robot related knowledge. Wise detection is adopted to have the service robot, which can also reduce the contact between the hub and the robot, and uh, the after the robot to move to the storage area of materials to be reserved by the service robot and come back. Come back. Come back. Robot related technology.
Summary because your time seven minutes is over and it's supposed to be QA from the jury. Jury, please ask any question to the team. Ask question now. Yes, uh, hello, can, can you hear me? Yes. Try to okay. be louder. Marco, try to be louder. Okay, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, I just have uh, one uh, simple question. You mentioned that the uh, you calculate the robot direct kinematics and inverse kinematics for controlling your arm, your manipulator. Uh, are you using some library to perform the inverse kinematics? And if so, which one? Uh, or are you making your own calculations, your own implementation of the inverse kinematic? Team, you may answer the question. All right, no question. Then we have to stop the presentation as the time up. Thank you for the current uh, team. Okay, let's uh, skip to the uh, let's uh, skip to the next uh, presentation. So we need to remove the OPJ zero seven yes. to the waiting room. Yes, please allow the next team to come in, and we should start now. We need a little time to add the team to into the room. The next team will be Team Incredibot. Team Incredibot, you may start now.
Team Incredible, I think you didn't turn on your mic. We can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Please be louder. Can you hear me now? Yes, but very soft. Please be louder. Hello judges, we are the members of the team Incredibots from China and it's a great honor to give a presentation of our robot to you. The robot we are going to demonstrate is designed for epidemic control such as the COVID-19 global epidemic. This robot is designed to patrol in public areas such as a subway station and detect whether people are wearing masks. Furthermore, if the robot detects a person that is not wearing a mask, it will go towards the person and remind the person to wear a mask. If him or her doesn't have a mask, the robot will give one. While patrolling the area, the robot will scan for the areas with high temperatures and remind the people that someone's temperature is above the normal level. The robot also uses its laser sensor to detect obstacles and avoid bumping into them. This is the flow diagram of the whole process. As for technic details, the functions of the robot can be majorly divided into three tasks. The first one is obstacle detecting and avoiding. To complete the task, we install the laser sensor on the robot's hand. This is a photo of the laser sensor. If the laser sensor detects that the robot is too close to the obstacle, the robot will steer clear of the obstacle and keep patrolling normally. The second task is scanning for the areas with high temperature, recognizing whether a person is wearing a mask and if not, go towards him or her. To take temperatures, we install an infrared temperature sensor right on the top camera. This is a photo of the temperature sensor and the top camera. As for mask recognizing, we use an AI model from the Baidu Paddle Paddle Library. The AI model will locate the person that is not wearing the mask, and the, per and the robot will then go towards him or her with the KCF algorithm. The KCF algorithm will extract some features from the recognized on mask person dynamically. Make a target of the person and then, and then go towards him or her with the PID algorithm. The last task is making a conversation with the person and giving out a mask if necessary. After the robot gets close enough to the person, the robot will first remind the person that him or her is not wearing a mask. After that, the robot will ask whether the person has a mask and recognize if the person says yes or no. If the person doesn't have a mask, the robot will give one. To give out masks, we made a mask box and installed on the robot. We also installed a steering gear to take out the masks from the box. This is a photo of the mask box and the steering gear we added. After a mask is pulled out, the robot arm will reach for the mask and lift it to the person. One thing that needs to be mentioned is that we also derived a few formulas and wrote a function to convert space correlation coordinates to the angles of the steering gears to control the robot arm more conveniently. Now, let us show you how everything works. Uh, we are going to open the camera and close the PPT. Now we are going to demonstrate the patrolling function of the robot.
Okay, now we are testing the robot's obstacle avoiding function. Please give your conclusion because your seven minutes time's up and jury you may start ask question. Okay. Uh, now the robot have recognized that Ji Shan is not wearing a mask. Jury, you may ask question. Any questions? Okay, you may ask any questions now. Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, congratulations for your presentation. And uh, do you have do you use a map during the patrol, or do you use only the sensors? Uh, pardon. Do you have a map of the environment during the pa during the patrol task? Um, if you're asking about obstacle detecting and avoiding, we only use the laser sensor to detect obstacles and avoid bumping into them. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? We have two more minutes. Okay, I have a question. So uh, if the person has a mask on, what the robot's gonna do? You didn't have that presentation, so. Uh, okay, if the person have a mask, the robot will just go away and keep patrolling normally. Okay, so no interaction. Yes. Okay, thank you. We have one more minutes, jury. You can still ask for a short question. Or for the teams, if you have anything to say, you can add something if there is no question from the jury. Um, do you have any more questions? Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you. Thank you, teams in Credibots. Right, so now let's invite the next team, Team Azure, which is also Open Platform Junior category. Okay. Is next team, Team Azure here? They are not in the waiting room. Team Azure. Team Azure, are you in the audience? Please come into the waiting, uh, the competition room as soon as possible. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. If the teams didn't appear, then we will proceed to the next team when the time up. Team Azure from Siam, Siam Gao Sing, number one high school. If you can hear me, please proceed to the competition meeting room now.
Team Azure. OPO02. Okay. Please hear me. With your presentation. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So. So smart. So, please wait a minute. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, so, so hello. We are Xi'an Gaoxi Nagura High School Team Azure. This is our final competition. So the first, I want to describe our final competition. We developed a situation. One day, when the area is academic, everyone stay at home and keeps distance from others. At noon, the takeaway you ordered is delivered. In order to prevent the spread of the epidemic, it's time for Asmo, our robot, to appear. So let's see how can it help you to help you in this in the real life. Hello, Michael. I am here. Please go to the door and take the delivery for me. Please conclude your presentation. So you can see this means here. I want to describe you guys our design concept. So we want Tim, to your time is our... up. Please conclude your presentation and jury you may start to ask questions. Uh, no. Hey, hey Jeffrey. Hello. 
So our work is not done yet. We still have some things to do. Dude, your time is up. So jury, you may ask question. Jury, you may ask question or the teams can proceed to explain further if you have no question. Hello, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you detect that the uh, bag is in the robot's hand? How do you realize that? that? Team, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay, the next team we have the gray area, also open platform junior category. The gray area from Macau, Puiching Middle School. The gray area, you may begin now. Good evening, judges. And professors, I'm the captain of the team, Joshua. And I'm Cristiano, the mechanic. And I'm Thomas, the programmer. And I'm Sebastian, the cameraman. And, and we, we are, are the great area team for Macau Pushing Middle School. So now we are going to do setup of our robots. So this is the in the live demo, and this is the environment that we. We are going to we are going to show. So this is our environment and our live demo will, will start in here. So the aim of our development is to let our robot understand more about the human world. By achieving it, we focus more on image processing this year. In the following demo, we will show object relationship, follow me, post detection and recognition. So last year, we used the original follow me from Turtle Boy, but we found out that if there's a third person coming between the robot and the human, it will follow him. So this year, we used YOLO, OpenVINO's person re-identification model and PD control. So this can prevent the robot from following the third person and also prevent the robot from following on the, the edge of the wall. Knowing the relation between objects and humans is a significant technology in robot development. We have used YOLO and a noise reduction function to get the information of objects. Besides detecting objects, we can also find out whether a human is in danger or not. We can divide the stairs as fall, sit, squat, and stand. We used open post and a self-trained model in this feature. Except for getting our robot to notice the real-time world, we aim to build a user-friendly robot. So we have adjusted the angle of the screen 
And we have also redesigning the whole robot by getting a container and also a manipulator. In this story, we will simulate an elderly man where he goes from his home to the park for a picnic and heads back home afterwards. Follow me now. So. Follow me now. Okay, no worries. So, so from now on. Please let me see your back in three seconds. So in a blue bounding box, our ro our robot will get the initial the, the front initial um, photos and the back initial photo of our elderly. So for example, there's someone walking across the robot. It will detect another person as red bounding box and our elderly as green bounding box. Actually, how we can achieve this function is we use this bounding box to put it into our Open Venus photo um, model, and we have a descriptor out. So we can compare the initial descriptor and the real-time descriptor. So if the real-time descriptor is similar to the initial descriptor, we will say that um, it is the same person. So we'll um, explain it later. And also right now, our, our elderly have arrived to the park. Anchor, let's sit here for rest. Okay, I will stop. So you can, in the real world, lots of elderly will forget things because of the increase of age. As a result, we need computer vision to help us detect what the elderly are bringing. We used VOC dataset in YOLO, which detected 20 objects, including humans, to achieve this function. In the right top image, you can see that we can detect a bottle which is in the green bounding box and also the human in the orange bounding box. So, for, so, when the, uh, so when the object is too far away, we have also added a noise reduction function so it won't be detected. So you can see right now, if there's another human coming inside, it will be a gray bounding box, which means that it is not the main character. So how we can do this is because we used to we, we calculate the two humans and find out which is more near to the centroid. Anchor, let's go back home now. Okay, let's go now. So actually how our robot can follow is it used the centroid in the bounding box. It used the X value of the bounding box to do the turning and also the Z value of the um, depth camera to do the, the front and backward. And we've also added our own um, PD control to let- Hey, Chris Kiano, you forgot to turning yourself. What did I forget? You forgot to take your bag and bottle with you on the table. Oh, silly me. Wait for me here. Okay. So actually right now, our robot can get the relation between the humans and also the objects. But for now, um, because I'm doing a classification of which objects is um, belongs to which humans is a bit difficult. So we haven't do this function yet. So, but in a real life situation, for example, someone wants to steal the robot. Follow me now. Okay, no worries. So you can see on the um, middle screen, the bounding box in red color. So it won't follow the person, the robot. But because we have a two seconds, um, two, two seconds validation. So as you can see here, it won't follow the human. So now, uh, So now our elderly will. So now our elderly will go back, go, go back and find the robot. And as you can see here, oh, I anchor. Let's go. Elderly. So in life, for this a real-time situation, for example, oh, in here, someone bumped into the elderly. So we need to ensure the safety of the elderly by using our post detection. So from now on, you can focus on the down. I feel dizzy now. We can focus on the write down photo. Do you need me to call the cops? Okay, team, you may want to call Hello, the cops. Hello, Chris Somebody is down. So you can Please see that help. there's a skeleton. Somebody is down. Please help. Somebody is down. Please help. So you can... Somebody is down. Please help. So you can see the skeleton and also the word. 
So actually, we have trained our own post detection model. First of all, we use 3,000 data set images to train our model in danger warning. Okay, safe. your time is up. So please, jury, you can start ask question. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are ready for the question. Do you remember? You can ask question. If no question, you can continue at any details you want. So, okay. So actually, basically, um, the post detection web um, trained our own model. For example, in here, there, we used VGG16 and also um, the CNN model to train our model. So in conclusion, so in conclusion, actually, we hope to push the development of home robotics by combining Ooh. image processing features with the robot we believe that with our development and technology, we can keep contributing to the RoboCup community and hopefully let more students know about this competition. Yeah. Jury members, do you have any question? Hi, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Jonathan can hear you. Yes. Please proceed. Uh, during the following task, if an obstacle yes. uh, uh, stop it, in the middle of, in between the robot and the and the person what happens so do you, you mean, use do you use do you use a map or do you use only the the vision to follow the person so actually we only use we didn't use any map we just used to follow me because we have the uh, we have the we can track whether the human is like is we should whether the person is the target person or not so our robot will stop for a while but um, after the, the people have passed, it will follow the right person again. So uh, in this task, we use the open Venus person via identification model, which uh, as its name, it can track the target person that you, you first inputted and then uh, avoid all non-target persons. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Any more uh, questions? Yeah, I have a Yes, I have a question. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, please be fast because the time is up. Okay, uh, just quick question. Uh, how much? Uh, how much computing power do you need uh, for training and for uh, the, the running ne neural network? I mean, do, do you need really high, uh, really much power, or is it easy? Is it's easy to run your neural neural network, for example, on a Raspberry Pi? Okay, uh, actually running those deep learning models is very uh, waste of computer processing powers. Okay, okay so I have to stop the present I have to stop the presentation because the time is up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you so much. Okay, so the next team is new E four zero four zero four. Yes, you may begin now. Okay. Do you hear? Can you see? Louder, louder, please. Can you see us? Yes. Okay. And can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Okay. So, uh, we are going to show you a demonstration of our robot and uh, our situation is uh, a, a pub or a bar. We came up with this idea because uh, in this uh, period with uh, COVID-19, we thought that uh, maybe we could help uh, um, the uh, barkeepers to uh, continue their activity. So in our demonstration, you will see Martino that uh, is uh, at the entrance. When uh, he will see a, a person that comes up, uh, he will follow. He will bring him uh, to the to the bar. Then uh, he will follow the person uh, to a desired table that uh, he likes, uh, and uh, he will uh, ask him for an order. Uh, finally, the robot uh, will go back to the uh, to the bar where uh, the uh, waiter will give the the robot the order, and then he will come back to the table with the order of the client.
we can start. Okay. Yes. Okay, you can go. Hey, welcome to all of our females. Please wash your hands. And to the mask. What is your name? My name is Luca. Hi, Luca. Follow me to the room. This is Luca. Hi, Luca. Welcome to the Barkino. Please follow his instructions. Thank you. Please choose the table, and I will follow you to this. Start following. Now the robot is following the guest, thanks to the deaf camera. In fact, the robot from the image from the deaf camera that you can see in the screen, uh, the robot, the robot. Uh, the robot understands where the back of the guest is, and uh, and yes, in his position, you can see in the RGB camera the position of the back of the guest and uh, distance from the back of the guest, and so uh, the robot is following the guest to the desired table. Thank you. This is my table. Okay, please, take a look on the menu. What would you like to drink? I'd like some American coffee. Would you like a snack? Yes, I'd like some grapes. And some fruit. Okay, I suggest the water room. Okay, thank you. I will go and bring back your order. Okay, now the robot uh, will return to the bar. In fact, uh, during the following of uh, the guest, the robot has saved some points. You can see in, in the map uh, the circles where the robot has saved uh, his position. And now the robot is... Uh, Yes, it's going from a point to another. You can see the red line. The red line indicates uh, the, um, the road that uh, he's following, and the red axis show you where uh, he's posi positioned now. As you can see now from the screen, uh, the robot will choose uh, uh, what uh, the client uh, chose. The American coffee. That is on the right. The waiter is going to put the American coffee on uh, on the on the robot, uh, and now he's going to to the snacks where uh, he will choose uh, and he will. Uh, understand uh, which was uh, the the chosen snack uh, from the guest uh, as you can see now the image will pop up uh, on the uh, left side of the screen please take the right please conclude your presentation and yes. jury you may start to ask question the the robot is now going to return uh, to the to the table where the client was uh, and uh, you can see on the map uh, that uh, he's uh, he's coming back, uh, and now there will uh, 
uh, appear some uh, a blue line and uh, uh, some blue axis that indicates uh, his new position. Jimmy, if the robot is returning to the table, you can ask we uh, ask us questions. Yes, you can ask us the questions. He's uh, just returning to the table now. I have a question. So when the robot is going back, following the path, if somebody shows up, what happens? No, uh, nothing because the robot recognizes uh, one person at a time. Uh, and uh, when he's done with one person, uh, he uh, may go to the starting point uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, take another client. Oh, no, I mean, like if some, something blocks the path. Oh, and nothing because uh, he doesn't uh, keep track of another person. Oh, so he's going to bump into the person? No, he's going to stop if he sees him and uh, then uh, he will continue once the person is not uh, in front of him. So he's going to wait? Yes. Okay. So following that question, you don't have any path planning uh, module in your system? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Do you have any path planning? module no no the path uh, is uh, uh, basically where the person goes so uh, nothing is uh, in the program that uh, is specific of the path uh, only uh, the robot by using its autumn chooses uh, um, the correct path uh, that uh, the the man or the person is uh, uh, has used before Yes, we didn't manage to use uh, uh, the, the navigation. We use only the Odom. And uh, yes, we use only the Odom for, uh, for the robot, uh, for the, the position of the robot at every moment. So during the path, when he follows the robot, uh, the person, uh, the robot saves, saves uh, some points uh, that uh, afterwards uh, he's going to use to go back to the bar or uh, uh, yeah, to the bar or back to the table where the customer is. Okay, time's it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I would like to call upon the next team. The next team, Open Platform Junior Category from Beijing National Day School. Is the next team in the waiting room? I'm not sure whether this uh, Chinese name is a team member. No, no, we, we just admit those with the correct naming. Beijing National Day School. Oh, we're Please here. Presentation. Oh, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Please, please begin your presentation. Okay, we'll begin soon. Can you see our screen? Yes. Okay, so we will start now. Uh, wait a second. Okay. So, hello everyone. We're team members of BNDS and we're from the iRobot Club of Beijing National School part of the Robot Club Alliance. And today we'll be showing some main functions of our, our serving robot, which is planned to be used in cafeterias. The main goal of our serving robot is to detect a customer in the first place and ask customers what they want to drink. On top of that, the serving robot will memorize the information and report it to the operator. Then the robot will detect the empty seat and guide the customer to it. Our serving robot will repeat doing this task until it finishes asking all the customers. The significance of our invention is that serving robots can substitute workers in the restaurants, helping the employer save a lot of money. It can also uh, help the order process become more effective. It can even be used in hospitals when asking patients in the words what drinks or food they want. 
Therefore, in the words, doctor, doctors don't have to directly contact with the patients when asking what kinds of service they need, effectively decreasing the rate of being affected. So now let's, so now let's uh, introduce Now our team members will introduce the functions one by one. So hello, everybody. Our robot has mastered some features that we'll show you today. First of all, it can communicate with people by speaking English. If a person tells the robot his own name, the robot can distinguish and remember the name and use it in later on occasions. In order to accomplish communication, we used voice detection and speech synthesis modules. This way, the robot can detect what is being said and then synthesize a personal response, allowing it to communicate freely. Next, it can identify a person as a target. This requires the usage of face detection, face recognition, and posture adjustment. The robot can tell where the person who needs its help is by detecting his face. That is, of course, this person has to be within our robot's camera range. After detecting his face, the robot will be able to recognize it. It can distinguish the faces of two guests and thus show two guests around instead of just one. Using posture adjustment, the robot will move himself in front of the guest and face him when speaking. And lastly, our robot can distinguish an empty seat. Similar to identifying a person, distinguishing an empty seat requires object detection, object recognition, and posture adjustment. By using these modules, the robot can detect the seat, distinguish that it is empty, and then adjust his own posture to go to the seat and face it. This part is crucial when leading our guest to his seat. So overall, our robot has accomplished introducing guests to each another and offering empty seats. And so now we're uh, going to introduce some main uh, techniques of our whole process. Well, first, the voice subscriber will uh, Will of the robot will ask user ready to start vocally, and if the answer is no, the voice subscriber will receive the information and wait for calling. And in the answer, if the answer is yes, the robot will start to detect the position of the guest and then ask a question to the guest. And the robot will wait for a response after asking question. The voice subscriber will wait for a yes or no during the whole process. And if it receives a yes, the uh, the robot will report this information to the operator and it will guide this user to the empty seat. And if the, uh, it receives a no, the robot will continue to record the customer's message. And the in the end of the get guiding, the robot will uh, need to get an answer about whether finish guiding all the customers. If it receives a yes now, it will end its guiding. And if it receives a no, it will back to the detect uh, customers and continue this process until none of the customers remain. So now we're going to show our main functions through a uh, video. Tim, do you have any visual? Because we can't see uh, yes, anything yes. from you. We only uh, can hear you. Yes, but uh, yes. Oh, please. Oh because one of my members cannot like, uh, like. Okay, please continue your video. presentation. Okay. Oh, sorry, can we wait a second? Because our one of our members have some problems. You only have can one minute see? left. Well, okay, so. All right. Yes. Jury, you can ask, you can start to ask question. The seven minutes over. Jury can start ask question. Tim, you can still say something if the jury didn't ask question. Uh, yes, but uh, be because one of our members still have problems like showing the video, uh, we're, we're kind of like fixing it. 
we have the video, but it's just like some technical issues now. So jury, you can ask question, other things, other question, and teams, you can continue adding some information. All right. Oh, thanks, thanks. So, what, is, video, yeah? what is the most complex task you have developed? So, sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, what is the, the most uh, complex task you, you have developed? Like the help me carry or the restaurant or, or which one? Uh, I think it's the process of like uh, asking questions to the customer and the customers is going to like uh, answer the question. Yes, and then we have to we have to distinguish what the customer says. Like uh, we ask a question and the other person says something and we have to correctly distinguish what the person says and that is kind of difficult. So how are you solving that problem now? Do you use Pocket Sphinx and uh, kind of dictionary or how, how do you plan to, to understand the, the, what, what the people say? Uh, because actually we have a dictionary in our robot and this dictionary will kind of like record what kind of words the customer might say and we will continue like adding some words the customers may say uh, into the dictionary. So um, if like, if the robots hear some like similar words in the dictionary, they will detect it. But the problem is uh, we still have a kind of limitations because if the customer say something out of the dictionary, um, the robots may uh, like fail to recognize it. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. We have one more minute. Jury, if you have anything to add, or teams, if you have anything you want to add, it's okay. One minute. Okay, since... All right, since nothing to add, so time's up. So thanks for the current team, and we would like to proceed to the next team. Right. So just now uh, was all the were all the junior category open platform has presented. So the next one we will start for the open category. Right. So for the first team, we would like to call upon Utah. Team Utah, you may start now. So for the jury, as a reminder, now start all the teams that belongs to the open category. Team Utah, please begin your presentation. Your time is counting. Hi everyone, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm um, sorry. Okay, I'll just uh, begin the presentation. So, uh, good, a uh, very good day to everyone here and the, uh, all the judges and everyone in this call. My name is Chen Ling. And I'll be doing uh, presenting representing Utah to present what we have uh, developed for this final pass. So as you can see, first on the left side of the screen, there's an image of a robot. So the the robot is actually a very typical mobile robot with two food trays. So the food tray is to hold the food to transport the food to the customer. Okay, so
So uh, the demonstration that I'll be showing you today is in a restaurant setting. So first the robot will begin in kitchen, then it will listen to the command from the operator. In this case is Amy. So Amy will give a command to the robot saying, follow, uh, find customer. Then the robot will start finding customers and taking their orders. After the robot got the orders, then the robot will deliver the order back to the kitchen. So after that, after that, um, the, the operator Amy will start to prepare the food and after that, once it's done preparing the food, you will deliver, uh, you ask the robot to deliver the food. So I'm going to play the video now. So first is to listen to the command. The hardware we are using is our laptop mic. So we do some keyword filtering to allow the robot to understand. Fine customer. Okay, I will go to the tables now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm told that my screen hang. Just a moment. Eh? Is it hanging again? Oh. It's okay, it's yes, okay. It's Just the go. same screen. Is it hanging? Uh, yes, but one. just continue. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yeah, yes. go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Just a moment, yeah. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay, so it will first listen to the command from uh, Amy and uh, then it will uh, proceed to find customers. Find, find customer. customer. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll go, go to the tables, tables now. now. So after that, uh, this is uh, the part where how do we do the localization and navigation. The robot actually have a detailed map of the restaurant. So uh, it was generated using the cartographer package. And this is, as you can see on the image on your left, there is a map and in the video, the, the robot is actually navigating the, the map. Leo, video hack. Can you guys see the video? Yes, yes, you can continue. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, we'll be talking about the environment descriptor. We actually, uh, because in an environment, the robot will have to navigate uh, in a dynamic environment, the furnitures might change. So this environment descriptor is actually helping us to uh, uh, evaluate the position of the tables in the restaurant. Okay, team, okay, please, team please conclude your conclude presentation, your presentation. And, jury, and jury, you may you begin, begin to ask to questions. Ask questions.
So it will actually update the robot here, as you can see in, in the video. So next, how we detect the, the customer is by using facial detection. So we are actually using OpenVINO. Uh, this one is uh, to uh, identify the customers and to localize it, to find it in 3D space. Jury, please, Jury, please ask, ask questions question to, to the team. Uh, yes, uh, any questions? So this is a demonstration on their take, uh, how they take the order. The robot actually repeats the order. The robot actually repeats the order back to the customer and uh, allow the customer to reconfirm their order. I take your order. I take your order. Yes. Sure. What would you sure. like to what have? Conflicts and lemonade. Conflicts and lemonade. This time, maybe I don't feel like eating conflicts and lemonade. Okay, okay, okay I will repeat your order. You order cornflakes. Lemonade. Lemonade. Is that your order? Let's say now I would like to have another thing, maybe like fried chicken and tea. I can say no and repeat my order. No. No. I am sorry. I am sorry. Could you repeat your order? Fried chicken and tea. Okay, I will repeat your order. Okay, I will repeat your order. order. Do you order fried chicken? Is tea? Is that your order? Yes. yes. Okay, I will go to the kitchen now. So that is the One minute for Q&A. Uh, yeah, we are open. You can uh, can ask questions. So it will report the hi, order back hi. to the customer. Ah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, do you see any, any software to organize, organize the behaviors, behaviors like, like uh, or something? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you come again uh, a bit louder? Do you use, Do you use uh, behavior trees or machine states, states to organize, organize the behaviors? behaviors? Or, uh, or to organize the videos? Sorry? The behaviors. The behaviors. Oh, the behavior. Uh, the robot actually uh, recognize the customer face uh, to identify which table they are on. Okay, time's up. Time's up. Thank you, Dims. Thank you, Dims. Okay, thanks. So I would like to call like upon to call the next team. Next. So team LASR from University of Leeds. Team LASR, you may begin now. Okay, um, am I sharing the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, just... We can't hear anything from you if you are saying something. Oh, am I still muted or? Well, uh, sorry, can you hear me speak now? Okay, yes. yes. Okay. So why don't you tell us what the robot's doing? Okay, so uh, right now the robot is, um, it went to a vantage point and uh, it's using open pose. It's using open pose to see if anybody's waving.
just so you know, we didn't have access to the lab and the robot since March. So we tried to do everything in the simulator, including having mannequins that wave. Yeah, so uh, it detected somebody waving, as you can see, this bounding box. So it's heading towards the customer. I'd like a medium coffee, please. No, thank you. We don't get the audio from the robot. You betcha. Oh, sorry. We can see um, what it's asking. Oh, you couldn't see that? OK. I thought I connected with computer audio. No, we. I mean, I, I saw the questions, but I didn't hear the robot speak. Yes, me too. Ah, OK, OK. Yeah, the only voice that we can hear is from you. That's all. Oh, that's oh, that's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, we have text to speech working right now, but I guess it didn't work. Share computer sound. OK. Could I please get one medium coffee? Please place the order on the counter and say check the items when you are done. Check the items. Checking the order. The order is incorrect. Please correct the order. The excess items are one small coffee. So it's using um, YOLO V3 to uh, detect coffee cups. We have our own custom weights. Checking the order. Order is correct. Please place the items in my bag and say all set when you are done. All set. All set. Thanks for your help. So just there, we use Pocket Sphinx for uh, keyword detection. Okay, you may want to conclude your presentation and jury, you can start asking question. Okay. Please. I have a question. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, how do you determine uh, the position of the person waving the hand? Because I see the robot actually arrives uh, from behind and not face to face to the person. To the requesting person. Oh, uh, right. So um, I was supposed to turn the mannequin. <laughs> I was too busy playing with the audio. Um, so I calculate the position by 
it, it finds a one meter radius around the person and it tries to make a plan. So in front of the person directly was the table and it's not the ideal location. So it decided to go behind. Okay, so, but uh, it Does didn't that make, make any... Yeah, yes, perfectly. But I mean, uh, once you arrive, you don't make any validation. Uh, I mean, to check if you are interacting correctly with the person, if you are uh, oh. actually seeing the person. Right, right. Do you, yeah. Are uh, you planning yeah. to do something like that? Uh, yeah, okay, we could okay. easily yeah, do that. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. We still have so just, to, just to clarify, the person detection is there. Um, it's just that, I guess, once it computes the uh, target position and, and, and goes there, it doesn't check again that the person is still there. I think this is what you were asking. Uh, yeah, and um, the uh, speech, the whole speech thing, it will just cancel if it doesn't hear any audio and it will return to the uh, finding a waving person state anyway. What's happening if two persons are, are waving the, the hands and the persons are pretty close to it? together so uh, I will just head to one of them so the assumption is that uh, if someone wants attention the robot will just go to anybody we could easily make it so that uh, it serves all the people who wave but uh, since it would we do, have seven, yeah. yeah since we have seven minutes it's just we serve one person I mean, it does that. It starts with one, serves that person, and then looks for more. Yep. Yep. One more minute. You can add or any question from the jury. Uh, I'd like to add that the uh, robot was actually uh, narrating at the start. I didn't realize my computer audio was off. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, hi, do you have uh, any previous experience in robotic competition? Um, yes, we attended the uh, CYROC last year, uh, held in Milton Keynes by the robotics, European Robotics League. Okay, time's up. Thank you, teams. Right, so let's call upon right, the thank next you. team. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so the next team is thank Open you. Black Bye. Open Category Children Day from Sandong University. Children's Day, you may begin now. Team Children's yeah, Day. Can you hear me? Yes, we, I can hear, we can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good, good evening, professors. We are the Children's Day of Open Platform. From Shandong University in China, because of the coronavirus, we cannot get into the school to build a real robot. So we made a simulation and this video to introduce our robots. Let's start the first part is the RTAB map and the mapping. As, as we can see at the, at the left side is 3D and the right side is 2D map. We use the RTAB 3D mapping package and the RGB tensor depth crack camera and uh, the sensor is a laser reader called Kokuyo. The most widely used 2D graphic package of GMapping is used for the following navigation because of the above functions. No matter where the robot is placed, it can map the room. So in some dangerous places, the robot can get in and get give me the map. And in this, this part is part of voice navigation. In this map, there are five coordinate points. Storage, bedroom, start, table, kitchen. When you talk to him, the coordinate points, it will go to there. For example, you want him to get to the bedroom, you can just tell him bedroom, he will go to the bedroom. At first, it needs to recognize what you are saying. So, Bedroom. So in this part, space recognition adopts package softening, a lightweight recognition tool. When we set the lexicon 
the word with the highest probability of occurrence will be matched after hearing the speech. And then it will be converted into the text and give the computer. And now the robot will know what you are saying, saying what are you talking about. After that, the target navigation will work. The target navigation will let him to build the start build the places. In this part, the target navigation will use the AMCL, a kind of robot positioning package and uh, move bases. It's a package for controlling the movements of robot pieces. And action lift is also called action in rows. So that you can give any co coordinate point and uh, direction angle in 2D map, and the robot plans the path to there by himself and rotate to a specific angle. Let's imagine you are in a hard summer night and you want a big cool beer, but you didn't move anymore. You can just let him, kitchen. hey, get me, a, get me a beer from the kitchen and then it will, will get to the kitchen and give you something you want. Okay, this part is face recognition. First, we need entering everyone's information, just like what kind of the drink they like and uh, where they played for. For example, who likes milk and he played for Golden State. The robot can remember everyone's information and it can immediately introduce the people when it sees him first. There should be sounds in this part, but when we recorded the video, our virtual machine was damaged, so there was no voice. But although you can look at the screen, it, it prints all the answers it should be spoken, just like your name is Paul, your favorite drink is coffee, you paid for Los Angeles. And this part is our very important part. Oh. Chatbot, you can chat with him just like a real person. Well, I was joking, but that was a joke. Thanks for the response. My name is Daniel. Haha, <laughs> it's cool. I'm not a doctor, but I'm not a doctor. Nice to meet you. Too bad you don't have anything to back up your claims. Where are you from? That's not true at all. It's the things you're doing at an angle that aren't anything close to the distance of me. Where are you from? That's what I said. Sorry to hear that. Asterisk, that's asterisk the difference between someone trying to talk to you and yourself. Hello. Yes, please. Nice to meet you. No, you don't. Talking? What are you talking about? You weren't the one who made that comment. Daniel, my name is Daniel. But you are right, it was a joke on your post. You don't seem to have anything to say about it. Kitchen, go to the kitchen. Well, sometimes it will joke with you just like this. Hello, are uh, you fine? Person, right? Well, that's a pretty cool thing to do. What do you do for a living? Talking? What are you talking about? You know what I meant. Okay, Tim, please conclude. That's what I'm going to say. From where are you from? Question. Point four. When we use TensorFlow to build our circulate neural network dataset, the dataset comes from the Reddit website board. So we use the circulate neural network to simulate the dialogue in a specific situation. After a lot of training, it can talk to people naturally. That's all. Thanks. Jury, you may begin to ask question.
team you can continue adding some comment if there is no question from the jury well when you cancel flow to build a RN network and uh, our data is from reddit and uh, is that data is like one comment with one reply and uh, this is uh, this is a data structure we can from the reddit any question from the jury Yes, team, you can continue adding information if no question. Well, well the, the video the video is we made today. It didn't the the before before video we post. One more we, minute. We think maybe maybe it will not be so clear when we if we don't uh, make the video. Any more question? Any question from the jury member? Jeffrey told us you can make a video. Right, time's up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, the current team. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll call upon the next team, which is uh, Team Jiaxing Technician from Jiaxing Technician Institute. Jiaxing Technician team, can you hear me? Uh, you need to connect to the system. Service to support the system for you. Right? 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 You may begin now. Right? 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 Yeah. 
driving technologies uh, as a default adopted the world of water. During the pandemic, robots will replace humans to reduce the risk of human infection. And during the pandemic, robots will replace humans to reduce the risk of human infection. Firstly, the mobile service robot is used to build a map of on the room in the area to be served so as to prepare for the subsequent coordinate point motion control of the robot. Space mapping robot positioning technology, the asteroid depth camera. Camera is adopted to build a space map, image acquisition, and the robot vision technologies are adopted. Um, voice interaction is adopted to start the service robot, which can also reduce the contact between the staff and the robot and uh, command the robot to move to the task list acquisition set to acquire the task list. Robot related technologies uh, adopted. One, uh, voice recognition and voice acquisition technology. Two, voice pattern recognition technology. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, right. Would you read? Would you need to ask question now? Can I ask a question? Yes. Yes. Please proceed okay. to ask the question. Okay. So thanks for your demonstration. So are you using any past planning algorithm? And during the academic robots, we are replaced humans to reduce the risk of human infection. So any past planning algorithm did you use for Tatobot? Can you see again? How could you? During the epidemic, robots will replace humans to reduce the risk of human infection. I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, Jury, you may ask other questions, no problem. Any more question? No. Not anymore. 
No, thank you. No question from the jury? You have anything to add? Teams, you can say anything. You can add some information if you want. You still have two more minutes. Um, this great video says that the working pressure of medical nurses and the risk of virus infection. One more minute, jury. Anything that's not clear that you wish to ask the team? Do for the motion control, basic uh, kinematics of a uh, same robot, the control model of a uh, two wheel differential control. Actually, reason is uh, ad adopted to control the forward and the backward. Uh, Kinematics of the robots. Hi. Uh, do you do any object detection in the first part of your presentation? Object detection and manipulation. All right, time's up. Okay, thank you, team. We will proceed to the next team. Okay, so the next team is uh, team uh, Sapienza team from Rome. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Sapienza team, are you in the waiting room? Sapienza team, are you in the competition waiting room? Or you are currently in the public meeting room? Please proceed to the competition meeting room now. Your time is start counting. Sapienza team from Sapienza University of Rome, Italy. Please proceed to the competition meeting room now. So Piazza team from Rome, are you here? Can you hear me? You will wait for the team until the time is up. If they don't appear within this time, then we will proceed to the next team. Sapienza team from University of Rome. For all the teams that is joining in the waiting room of the competition meeting, meeting room, please change your name according to the instruction. Without your team code and team name, we won't allow you to enter the competition meeting room.
Sapienza team from Sapienza University of Rome. Can you hear me? We are waiting for you in the competition meeting room. Sapienza team, please begin your presentation. Okay. You have five minutes more left, but in fact, you have only two minutes for presentation. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So um, uh, first, a brief introduction. So our project um, is uh, centered on addressing the problem of uh, of addressing one of the major problems of COVID-19, or one of the main um, uh, arguments, which is the e-commerce, the increase of e-commerce e during uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, period that we have passed. So basically, we we um, we use mar our our robot. Our robot's name is uh, Martino to to um, to fill the gap between us and the postman. So basically, the postman uh, comes into your into the front of your door, and uh, Martino, so our, our robot, is going to uh, to take the package for us, and it will uh, it will basically uh, show um, say to the to the postman. Uh, it, uh, I will give you five seconds in order to leave the package onto our uh, onto the robot, and uh, the postman the postman will leave the package on the robot and bring it back to our house. And this is uh, made to minimize the contact with the postman, and uh, to let maybe people we, who have uh, uh, physical uh, difficulties uh, to carry the package for them so for example if there is a shopping bag which is really heavy the robot will go to the door and take it for instead on our behalf basically so our robot is uh, this is uh, the previous version of our robot which uh, didn't have navigation and it is the version that we uh, sent you last time so basically the basic functionalities are uh, the speakers, which lets you interact with the person, so text to speech, and uh, speech to text, so it will recognize uh, our voice. Uh, so when we say "go to the door, please," it will go to the door and uh, meet the postman. So basically, uh, another function is the navigation that we recently introduced and uh, for the finals. And we achieved it using a LiDAR, which is a sensor that will let the robot navigate through the map and get to the door and back to our starting position. So the LiDAR uh, now um, lets the robot be uh, more useful in real life scenarios. And uh, we achieved uh, this by mapping our house uh, with um, using RVs and the mapping features of uh, of the ROS packages, and so we um, we control the robot using okay, our joystick. Please conclude and jury, you can start asking okay. questions. You okay. can conclude. If no question, okay. You can so we have uh, we have a video of the robot uh, and. 
after that uh, nothing more so if we can show the video otherwise we have we're ready for questions if no question you can show your video okay yeah, please show right. your video. do you remember so door, please ask yeah. question if you have any question okay actually we don't hmm? so can we can we go on with the video yes yes please show the video if no question from the jury please show the video okay. the door please Okay, time is up. You have anything to okay. conclude? Else, we will proceed to the next team. Okay, thank you very much. No, okay, we're done. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, we will pause for five minutes because uh, we have some technical errors that we can't broadcast the webcam to the public uh, meeting room. So we will break for five minutes. We will resume after five minutes. So everything will delay for five minutes. Okay, I think uh, we can go on. Thank you. Jeffrey. Jeffrey, can you hear me? Jeffrey. Yes, I can Anybody? hear you. We will uh, resume. At nine zero five. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will resume at nine zero five. So everyone, please get ready. Two more minutes to go, and we will start the next team. Uh, could you please help? Uh, could you please help me to turn on the video and uh, check whether I can see the video? Which video? Uh, USB camera. Anyone? Okay. So I'll turn on my USB camera. Okay, I see. Thank you. Is everything okay? I think it's okay. Okay. Right.
Okay, one more minute and we will proceed to the next team. So the next team is open platform, open category. Uh, everyone from um, Ritsumeikan University, Japan. Okay, one more minute and we will start the next team. Okay, I let the next team come in. In day one, you may begin your presentation now. I start. I am a member of Lyon, Shiro Hirosei, today. I will talk about final remote control. Let's start. Alexa, living off. Like this, smart home appliances have been famous in recent years. Before we come back home, we can also turn on air conditioner. It means that there are more situations which they control things from a distance. Refer to the smart home appliances. Our robot can be controlled from a distance by smartphone or tablet. To make this service application appropriate, In the same light of okay. in the same light of HTTP protocol, our applications can communicate communicate with those like this communication path. After PC running loss, set up web server. It communicates with loss libjs by loss web bridge. By using loss web bridge, robots can send data and receive commands from web application easily. This way is effective to control robots from smartphone or tablet. It's not This is our application's UI. By using simple UI application, both young and old people can understand how to communicate with a robot easily. Just push a button, people can control a robot. And we can also chat with robots from the second tab.
Vamos a hacer para acá. Let's imagine that operators are in their house houses and robots are in restaurants. We will show that operator control a robot from a distance to bring foods. First point is, by the way, why our application and system is important. First point is for people who are physically handicapped, handicapped, handicapped because of disease or accidents. By using this application, they can work at restaurants from their houses or hospitals. If this system is used, these people can work and get salary again. Second, even if there is coronavirus, owner can have waiters without risk of infection. Because coronavirus is so serious virus, we have to keep from meeting a lot of people. In the future, like this application will be important. Okay. Using a simple so system and UI is beneficial to both users and engineers. If robots can get information from people and move properly, people's lives will be overflowing. Okay, Dim, please conclude your presentation and jury. You Web may API begin and question. robots will be closer in the future. Thank you for listening. Our presentation is over. Jury, you may start to ask questions. Yes. So if no question asked, Dim, you can add any more information if you like, if no question asked from the jury. Yes. Okay, I have a question. Uh, does the user have a full control of the device? I mean, can you prevent some accidents or crashing over objects of people? I will show the our. I will show our robot don't make collision. Like this, our robot will stop automatically if detect oh. a human. Thank you. Yes. You have two more minutes. Anything to add or anything okay, you want to add? A, from the a second question. Uh, yes, what is please. the what is the time lag between the when you send a command and when the robot receives the command? I mean, is it almost real time or it depends on the internet connection? So you might get, uh, you might lost a uh, connection. Uh, what, what do you do in, in such case? Uh, 
Look, 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 look. We, our, pre, our application don't have lag, but huh? we can uh, send command to robot without a lag, but um, this um, camera movie has a little lag. どう、どういう風に、インターネットコネクション。あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Right, so uh, once again, um, welcome. So for those that um, just enter and anyone that just uh, joined the session before the very early introduction, just now at seven, uh, once again, so welcome to RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020. I'm Jeffrey, I'm the host today and also tomorrow uh, to bring you this event. So now um, we will spend about 45 minutes for this uh, open ceremony because we have already like completed 12 teams and we have another two teams to go after this. Uh, please allow me to introduce uh, this event and also uh, our good organization. And then later on, I will uh, introduce to you our jury and also our sponsor. Okay, so first thing first, um, due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and um, we have uh, delay or should say we have postponed our original um, RoboCup at Home Education challenge which is supposed to take place in this week uh, but uh, automatically it follow a RoboCup postponement to next year. So um, we designed this uh, online uh, challenge 2020 uh, with the mind that we want all these activities uh, to be performed and conducted in a very safe condition. So let me read first um, our uh, principle uh, before we start our introducing our event. So all the proposed uh, activities must be performed in compliance with local regulation and safety procedure, especially to those uh, related to COVID-19 limitation. I understand like now still many people uh, still under the effect of um, lockdown or maybe uh, social distancing. So the students are invited to work and interact uh, remotely with organizer of the challenge and among themselves. So we hope everyone can continue RoboCup development and challenges while keeping safe and healthy at home. So this is our safety uh, policy when we start to design this event. Okay, then um, I would like to introduce uh, people that um, organize as a, organize this event, which is as an organizer. So in the list, um, so we are RoboCup at Home Education, so we are the uh, main organizer for this uh, event. And I'm Jeffrey, so one of the OC member. And also together with me, um, I'm not sure if Luca still online. Luca, are you still online? Okay, so Luca is uh, another OC member that um, just now was uh, uh, doing the jury uh, duty as well, but he actually messaged me and told me that um, his uh, network connection is not very stable because it's um, uh, outstation. Right, never mind. So um, maybe we can introduce Luca later on, maybe tomorrow. And next, I would like to call upon Amy. Amy, can you just show your webcam and say hi to everyone? Amy? Yeah, hold on a sec. <laughs> I'm okay. actually in two meetings too. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, just, just say uh, hi. It, yeah. We'll do the Can long introduction later on. Yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you for participating. It's great to have you on. Okay. Okay. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. So, and then we have one OC member, Kanjana Pan, which is uh, currently is busy uh, with some other uh, appointment. Uh, then next we have... Um, Hagiwara, uh, Yoshinobu Hagiwara. So can I call upon Hagiwara Sang? Yes, say hi to our audience. Hey. Can you yeah. hear me? Okay. Yes, 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 we can so, hear you. Okay. So I'm Yoshinobu Hagiwara, a lecturer of Rizmekan University, Japan. So I'm an OC member uh, of Global Cup Atom Education Challenge uh, from 90. Ah, sorry, <laughs> 2015 uh, in RoboCup Japan Open. And so uh, currently I'm uh, working on uh, uh, RoboCup at home domestic standard platform using uh, Toyota HSR. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hagiwa uh, san. Uh, right, so uh, we are five uh, in the RoboCup at Home Education uh, OC member, but we are supported by a lot of more of our members uh, that I will introduce after this. Uh, first, we would like to introduce our sponsor and technical partner first. So the first one will be SoftBank Robotics. So um, I think I saw in the list, Fui, are you in? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so can you like 
turn on and say hi to our audience. Hello. Hello all. Okay. Thanks the uh, OC. Thanks for all the good work. Uh, Pepper, uh, the standard platform will be scheduled for tomorrow. The yes. same time. So uh, please, please stay tuned. Look yeah. forward to see you yeah. soon. Thank you, for, yeah. Thank you for your time for the jury duty today. Right. So um, so um, Band Robotics uh, uh, call it start, started to collaborate with us start, uh, started this year, uh, which is originally we supposed to have this uh, standard platform in the original uh, at home education challenge. But um, now since we move everything to online, so we still uh, organize the standard platform as a, a new division in RoboCup at home education that will take place tomorrow. So tomorrow uh, we will have 10 teams that will work on the standard platform, which is the Pepper Robot by SoftBank Robotics and to show you uh, the presentation in the final. Okay, and then I'm not sure the rest, maybe Clarice, email and... Okay, Ashley is uh, in background doing some work. So maybe I will introduce her later. Then we proceed to the next, um, our sponsor and social technical partner. So can I have Lucia from Jupiter Robot? Can you turn on your webcam yes, and say I'm hi here. to our yes. audience? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Say hi to uh, the yes. audience. <laughs> Yes, hello everyone. And uh, Jupiter Robot uh, is very honored to participate in this competition. And uh, thanks to organizing this online challenge. And uh, I think it's very, uh, I, I, it's great to see so many excellent works. And uh, we believe that uh, all the students have many uh, great uh, efforts. And I also Surprised uh, by the students' creativity, and uh, the competition becomes more and more interesting and wonderful. And uh, thank, thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank yes. you, Lucia. Thanks, thanks, Jupiter Robot. And Jupiter Robot just um, sent me a, a, a photo about the award, uh, the the trophy that they are going to uh, they sponsor for us in order to give to our winner uh, that you will receive tomorrow. Right, so it's very nice for them to help, uh, and also like their staff. Later on, we will, I, will, I will introduce their staff later on. Okay, and then our next um, sponsor and technical partner is uh, Masswork. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure if uh, Jose is uh, around today. Uh, they have been working with us ever since our our yeah one of our very early event that we work together with Masswork to organize workshops and so on. So as a continued effort, they still like support us and. If some of you maybe remember, we just have one, uh, invite the first invited lecture by um, Jose uh, regarding how to use Mass MATLAB, which is a product from MassWork to uh, develop with uh, for for robotics uh, development. Okay, so so far uh, I have uh, introduced all the important key person uh, that part of our this event organization, right? So yeah. Allow me to have a few minutes to uh, introduce ourselves, uh, RoboCup at Home Education, to especially for those that just um, join these activities and, and firstly heard about us. So uh, I would like to introduce ourselves first to all of you again, once again. So RoboCup at Home Education is an educational initiative in RoboCup at Home that promotes educational efforts to boost RoboCup at Home participation and artificial intelligent focused service robot development. So under this initiative, uh, currently we have four efforts that is in uh, that are in active operation. So the first thing is a RoboCup at Home Education Challenge event, which is something like this, a uh, robotics challenge competition. And we do it in a national level, regional level. Regional level is, is very similar like the RoboCup Asia Pacific, RoboCup European and so on and also in international level, which is uh, started from 2018, which is uh, we organized our education challenge in Montreal, then last year in Sydney, and this year supposed to be in Rodos, but yeah, we will do it next year in 2021, RoboCup. That's, uh, that's uh, one of our main activities in uh, this initiative. Then the second um, activities in this initiative is like we uh, develop open source educational robot platform development. So we support this kind of um, 
educational robot platform development. We support a lot. Like um, there are many teams in RoboCup at home that open source their development. So under this um, RoboCup at home education, we try to gather all these um, open source resources and uh, especially to support those um, beginner team or, or newcomer who want to learn how to build service robot. So uh, we try to find resources to actually gather all these open source resources in order to help um, beginner or newcomer or anyone, public, um, the public uh, who like to learn about AI and robotics. So um, this is one of our main um, operation in our activities in, in this initiative. Then the third one is uh, once we try to gather all the information uh, about how to develop robot and so on, we realize that what beginner needs is not just how to do the robot, but also we need to have a material to teach them, especially when we want to outreach to more um, region or more communities that never have all these um, activities before. So the third one is uh, we try to uh, put together open courseware, which is Previously, we have a lot of materials that design for our workshops, hands-on workshops that we have physical meeting uh, to actually share with the community how to build robots. Uh, but now we also have a very new um, development. So due to also due to the current situation, we started our online classroom uh, this year, March. So we started this online classroom and we start to uh, package all our teaching materials into online classroom materials that you can find a lot in our website on our website so we can find like videos and also um, slides and so on that uh, will help the general public to learn about um, AI and also service robot development all right so remember to check out that and lastly is the outreach um, effort so we want to actually uh, promote and also outreach these all these materials and resources to more uh, area and countries and also places or communities that don't have or never have chance before to start learn about AI and robotics. So uh, under these activities, we actually previously we do a lot of personally I involve in a lot of um, workshops that we run in various country and various regions. But now due to the travel restriction, we also try to do our outreach in an online form. So this is one of the online form. And we can see like there are many participants today, not just participants, but also we have a lot of audience. Uh, so this is one of our effort to outreach all this um, information or all this uh, knowledge and resources to uh, more community. Okay, so for more information, please, um, so that is our website. So please go to our website. You can find all the information that uh, I just mentioned. What are those or all the details and including if you want to find all those learning resources, um, how to build robots resources and our online classroom content, video, everything is over there, right? So please head to our uh, website for more information. And yeah, lastly, I would like to introduce our Facebook group as well because like website maybe is not easy for communication or for community building. So we have a Facebook group uh, sorry, Facebook page, which is inside the page, we have a Facebook group that you can join and you can interact and communicate with our community inside there, and including us, OC member, and also all the members that, that involved in our activity before. Okay, so that is uh, basically the overall of um, our organization. And um, as you can see down there, uh, I would like to say thanks to all these um, sponsors. So they are sponsors. Our first main sponsor is RoboCup. So RoboCup actually support us right from the beginning. Uh, every year they support us for outreach activities, projects, uh, developments, and so on. Then Masswork is uh, the first um, industrial partner that partner with us to uh, organize a workshop in 2000. 17 yeah 17 that was the first time in um, robocup asia pacific in thailand then softbank uh, recently joined us which is um uh, we actually discussed for quite some quite some time because softbank robotics actually support um robocup at home uh, since 2017 uh, then we have been in touch and now they uh, work together with us we work together uh, to focus more on the education part right then the next uh, sponsor is Jupiter Robot. So Jupiter Robot um, also uh, start to like 
work together with us uh, since last year, if I'm not mistaken, Sydney. So they actually provide um, a lot of support in terms of hardware support, especially uh, for the teams that without hardware, uh, so that they can actually uh, try to use the Jupyter robot platform to do uh, development. And that robot is actually one of the open platform that we use uh, in our workshop. Okay, and lastly, IEEE. So IEEE RAS, um, initially, uh, we actually got one um, funding from IEEE RAS to develop open courseware. So our first ever version of open courseware is actually supported by IEEE RAS. And you can find the link in our website uh, for all the uh, materials that we developed for the open courseware. Okay, so just a brief uh, history, like we started um, since 2015, uh, from Japan. So uh, we started to organize. So the first ever RoboCup at Home Education Challenge uh, was happened in Japan in RoboCup Japan Open 2015. So that was the first time. And you can see the photo. If I not, yeah, I think that is the photo, the first one on the right hand side. Then for, um, then we also like uh, start in Europe, which is uh, originally from Italy. Uh, the activities in, in Europe started from Italy, which is um, mainly headed by Luca. So Luca actually uh, outreached all the act our activities in uh, from Italy, and now we actually cover uh, many teams uh, within Europe. Then for international, 2018, we start our first international um, education challenge in Canada. Then, and also during that time, we start to um, extend our reach to most of the country in Europe. Then in 2019, uh, we organized in Australia and also at the same time, we extend to many countries in Asia, especially like China and also Malaysia and, and other things and Thai as well, right? And so far for 2020, uh, 2020, we actually have four events in zero, five events in Asia and two events in America that we plan to organize. But due to the pandemic uh, situation, we postponed all our activities. Uh, everything got postponed but uh, on top of that we don't stop our effort and we organize this online challenge so at least in 2020, uh, 2020 we still have this online challenge as one of our uh, international event in robo cup at home education so hopefully like um, next year we will follow the same uh, tradition to organize in uh, 2021 uh, robo cup in Rodox next year in france so hopefully to see you next year in france Okay, so these are some statistics about our outreach activities. Uh, we have gone through many places. We have worked through workshops, talks, and, and, and the rest. So uh, we have covered many cities and country, and we, have, uh, we are very happy that we actually have a lot of communities that like our activities and work together with us. So you can see like there are many pictures. So if you like those photos, you can go to our website. We can, we've got a lot more those uh, photos on our website but over here my message to all of you is like if let's say uh, your community uh, will want to start this kind of activity or want to involve in this activity so feel free and don't hesitate to contact us so that we can work out some plan to see how we can bring these resources to your uh, community and um, our idea is to bring all this community uh, sorry these resources to your community and help you to build up your community with all these resources. So eventually, like you can self-sustain with all these uh, resources and have the activities, for example, the challenge organized in your local uh, community, and you have the workshops that running, you have the education activities and so on. So uh, please reach, uh, contact us uh, to discuss more how to bring all these things to your place. Okay, so that is all uh, my very brief introduction about RoboCup at Home Education. So um, some of you might be, this is the first time that you join our activity and maybe you got like invited by your friend to join this uh, event. So please allow me to, for another five minutes to explain to you. So what is this online challenge 2020 is all about? So the objective of this online challenge 2020 is um, a new form of online event in parallel with uh, our education challenge. So previously our education challenge is all about physical robot building and competition. And we have the hands-on workshops that everyone uh, come in the same place and we do the activities together. But 
this online challenge is actually a new form. So we do uh, this online, uh, all our activity, try to do all our uh, development in an online form. Okay. But of course, it is in parallel with our education channel. We don't stop doing physical uh, developments once it is ready or once we are allowed to do so. And also, the objective is to continue promoting AI and robotics learning and RoboCup development. Okay, because uh, we don't want to stop all our development because of the situation, uh, but we also want to keep safe and healthy at home. So how to have our development continue, our learning continue while everyone is still in a very healthy form. So we try to formulate a way and this is our way uh, to tell you all how you can actually continue RoboCup development while you are still safe in home. Okay, so we design our format is um, uh, we started these uh, activities from end of March this year. So we started with uh, online classroom. So we start to organize online classroom and that was also like the first time we tried to uh, do our workshop in an online form. So we have this online classroom. So if you want to know like the content, you can go to our website uh, to see what actually we have done in our online uh, classroom. So the classroom purpose, the online classroom purpose is to have another way for us to do the workshop, which is Previously, we do the workshop during the competition, but now we do it online classroom so that all the teams who want to participate in this challenge, they can actually learn, start to learn how to build the robot uh, within uh, their, how to say, in their home. Okay, so within their safe area, for example, like if they can only uh, stay in the room or stay in the house or so that is uh, we try to find a way that they can actually do robots within the safe areas that they, they are so we no need to like uh, have everyone to gather in the loop uh, in the lab or school you need to go to the school to access the robots in order to learn all the development all right so that is uh, the purpose of the online classroom then after that we have this uh, robot development support so this is also one of the uh, new things that we develop and thanks to the support from softbank robotics and also jupiter robot that cooperate as our technical partner to cooperate in this robot development support so what this development robot development support is all about we try to show the teams how to develop code for example like you can develop code uh, using simulator using uh, just write the software and so on but eventually you want to test your code you want to test uh, whatever that you have developed on an actual robot so uh, we work together with uh, uh, software robotics and jupiter robot as a hardware uh, provider so they actually uh, allow our teams to submit certain of the code for them to actually try to execute uh, in their robots okay so uh, this is a new way of development that we can allow teams who don't have robot or haven't have the robot or cannot access to the robot have a chance to start do development and can see how is the result of their development in actual robot. And with that also, uh, it enables teams without robots to join the technical video challenge. So we have the technical video challenge that we have gathered. So. Um, and we already opened the 24 teams, which is uh, in this final, the final list of this uh, uh, event. All their videos uh, that they submitted for technical video challenge are currently open in our YouTube channel and also our Billy Billy channel uh, for community in China. So you are freely can see their development. And all this video and all this um, development is done in a remote way in, for most of the teams, okay? Then lastly, the format for this online challenge is we have this virtual, not to say virtual, but online uh, competition. So all the teams currently, just now you see like 14 teams, they are at different location, different time zones. Some is in the morning, some is afternoon, and over here in Asia, we are at night. Then you can see also teams that uh, do the presentation in their school, in their lab, and some is even in at, at their home, I guess. Some I can see like home environment. Currently, I'm in my uh, house environment so you can see like bit behind so this is my room so um, it's a new way that we do all this competition remotely while live streaming okay so for more detail about this competition and how uh, for the details that I just said you can head to our web page to see more details on how all these um, activities is uh, was conducted okay 
Then in this uh, online challenge, we actually have two types of uh, robot platform. So one type is open platform, which is open for any kind of robots, custom built robots, which is over here. You can see a lot is TurtleBot based, uh, TurtleBot 2 based or Martino based or any other ROS based robot. Just now you can see like a lot, they have the ROS interface and so on. So these are all the teams in open platform that they develop uh, custom built robots and they enter. So today is the open platform final. So we have 14 teams, uh, seven teams from open category and seven teams from junior category to fight for the final. Then tomorrow we will have the st our standard platform team, which is uh, everyone is using a standard platform, standard robot platform, which is the, ro the Pepper robot uh, by SoftBank Robotics. And also this time we try something very new, which is we have um, two kind of software framework that use to develop Pepper. So one is the 2.9 version, Pepper 2.9, the software version, which is um, focused on Android uh, framework. And another one is the 2.5, which is the, the previous one, which is more widely uh, people known, that is a Python based. Or you can, or if you know Choreograph, that is the, the version that we use. So tomorrow you can see we have both, uh, we have teams from both um, category uh, that you can see how is their development, whether they develop in Android or they develop in a Python based environment and what, how the robot behave and also what are the uh, the solution that they provide with their development. Okay, then this one I think like everyone uh, will be interested on this. So for this competition, we actually provide a lot of awards. But over here, I would like to clarify that this award is not a RoboCup award. So because this year we don't have any RoboCup event, but this uh, award is mainly for RoboCup at home education. And all this award uh, mainly supported and sponsored by our uh, sponsor, which is Masswork, Jupiter Robots, and also SoftBank Robotics. And we put the category. So tomorrow, um, you can during the award ceremony, we'll give out all these uh, prizes. So for open platform, we have open category and junior category will all have three, the top three uh, gold, silver, bronze award. And for standard platform, we have um, Pepper 2.9 best performance, Pepper 2.5 best performance, and also for the Pepper 2.5 junior category, because we have, um, if I'm not mistaken, six teams. So we actually have three uh, gold silver awards for them. And this year we, 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 we actually do a lot of new record this year. So this year we started a new attempt. So we call it the People's Choice Award. This People's Choice Award is with the motivation that uh, because we are developing service robots. So what we want to do is like, we want to develop service robot that is uh, friendly and good for normal people, general public. Okay, but um, so far our judging criteria, our way of assessing our team are very technical. So we have judged from uh, at home, from RoboCup, and even for the external uh, judge, we still uh, ask people that have experience in robot building. But what about people who don't know robot at all? So do they have a say on how we should develop service robot? Okay, so with that, motivation we started this um uh, people's choice award this year and the selection of this people choice award is totally based on the response from the general public which is we put out the video of all the teams on youtube and bilibili and it's up to the general public to like share and comment so we want to see how much interaction uh, they, they, they they get and also for all the audience in the in the public uh, meeting room uh, may, you may realize that Every time when um, we are in the Q and A uh, time of the presentation, uh, there's a pop up window that to let you vote for the teams that you think is good. Okay, so um, that is another way that we try to collect um, voices from the public to see uh, which team or which development is liked or how to say supported by the general public. Okay, so this is very new, and we try to. Exp uh, we hope that we can ex uh, experiment uh, with all these things. Uh, uh, we look forward, right? So we look forward next uh, tomorrow to see who uh, will get this uh, People's Choice Award. So we only have one for open platform, which is out of um, 14 team, we will choose one for uh, People's Choice Award and another one for standard platform. Right, so don't forget to cast your vote in the 
in the public uh, meeting room. Okay, so just now um, I've talked about the four main formats. So over here there are some details like our online classes, six class from April to May. Then we have our robot development support, which is our sponsor try to help to uh, execute the code developed by teams who don't even have robots. And then we have the technical video. And over here I put it in red. Uh, so please, uh, if you want to know where is our YouTube and, and Billy Billy channel, so please go to our website. There's a link there that you can see the video. All right. And also just now the one in blue is uh, if you are interested to learn Although you have missed all the online classes, don't worry, we have all the videos and materials available on our website. Then finally, we have this online challenge, which is now taking place. All right, so for the final, uh, as you already um, witnessed, uh, the first 12 teams, so the teams develop, then they present and do demonstration remotely. So some, they actually do a uh, real robot demonstration as well, remotely, and you can see via live streaming. So maybe like some teams are actually as far as like Later on, we have two teams, one in Canada and one in US. They are going to uh, show you their robots uh, for audience here that may be from Asia or from Europe. So that is uh, the format of uh, our final. And over here, I would like to um, uh, remind that uh, this time due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation, we added this as one of our team for robot uh, development. So you can see like out of three teams, we actually have one which is robot application to address the current uh, pandemic situation. So that is our one of our way to make our development more relevant to the current situation. Okay. Okay. So, so far uh, I have uh, introduced a lot. I have talked a lot also. So it's time for me to pass my mic to, to others to tell you more. So, um, I initially, I, I, I would like to invite our chief jury member for open category and also for junior category, Luca and Amy, to, to conduct the, this session after this. But I'm not sure if they are available. I I'm, I'm guess Luca is not available, available now. But how about Amy? Amy, are you around? I'm sorry, I was distracted. What are you asking us to do? So what I want you to do is like, um, okay, so for the rest of the time, I would like to invite all the jury member to tell, uh, to share with us. I mean, first to introduce themselves because I haven't really introduced the jury member. So first is to introduce themselves and then to tell us some opinion or some suggestion or whatever that they want to share with our audience uh, with their experience just now. <laughs> experience. So, um, so okay. I wanted to pass this session to you and you conduct this with the rest of the jury. Is that okay? But don't okay. worry, I will try to help you in introducing the, the people as well. Okay, so, okay, just, so here just we are. Talk our, about Amy and Amy Chief, our <laughs> chief jury member for junior category. So maybe just now you already introduced yourself. Maybe now you want to say something about what you have experienced just now as a jury member. Yeah, so... Um... Welcome everybody once more. Um, this is my actually first time seeing the at home education teams performing even virtually because usually, you know, when we're on site, we're basically running around trying to figure things out or just sitting in the meeting. And it, 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 it was actually my pleasure. I'm really enjoying seeing the, the accomplishment that teams have um, made in this short period of time because we started the workshop when toward the end of march or beginning of april so we didn't really give the teams much time to develop their um, platforms or you know code and learning about how to do and what to do and then i like i like the ideas of how to use this uh, social robotics in everyday life Thank so you. it it I'm, I'm having fun. So thank you so much. Okay, right. Okay, I hope it's not too intense for you. <laughs> right. No, so we have, uh, we have two type of jury members. So we have one type, which is I try to categorize. Initially, I want to divide them into in internal and external, but I think this is more appropriate. So we have academic type of jury member, which is uh, I think like Professor Okada, Louis, and Jonathan, and Hagiwara, and also Marco. So these are the few people that um, join us today. So for those people that I just mentioned your name, uh, once again, can you like introduce yourself and say a few words? Hello, <laughs> are you still there? So maybe I'll start with Louis. Louis, are you there? 
Hi. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think like Professor Okada have gone to another meeting, right? If I'm not mistaken. So maybe Luis, you can yeah say something about your yeah. any any uh yeah your opinion about the very intense twelve team of uh, jury duty just now. No, it has been very interesting. Also, <laughs> I, I can see teams trying to to reach uh, or to improving the the communication. Uh, via distance, so that's very interesting. And uh, how can they can manage to, to organize a, a, a group or a competition uh, using this new technology? So this, this is a great experience, and uh, and thank you for for letting me in. Yeah, and and I hope you can help us until tomorrow. <laughs> we still got a lot more teams to go. <laughs> right. So thanks, yeah. uh, Luis. So the next, I will call upon Jonathan. I hope I pronounce it correctly Jonathan <laughs> yes hi everyone yeah. I'm Jonathan and I'm happy to to stay here uh, be part of the jury uh, and I'm so happy to to see that the the level of the participant continues uh, grow um, mm -hmm. thank you okay thank you <laughs> right thank you all right so I call again uh how are you Rasam? So just want to introduce yourself. Maybe you can say something <laughs> about the competition. Okay, so um, I'm really happy to join the uh, Atomic Education Online Challenge this year. And I have to say thank you for Jerry to organize the online challenge. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, so next one in the list should be Marco, right? Marco, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Hello. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How is Hello. it? I think like first time you join us <laughs> uh, for this education challenge. How is it? I know you are at home yes. um, team. Yes. Uh, this is the first time I'm uh, joining this uh, yep. challenge. I've been participating, as you said, in the at home league uh, for many, many years. But yeah. this is the first time I see uh, something related to Robocop, but uh, for educational purposes. Which is really really amazing because uh, I think it will uh, make uh, more advances in, in the future teams. So I think with this will will really boost the development of, of robot domestic service robots. Yeah, so it's you. really amazing to see that. Uh, teams. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it, it's really amazing to see that the uh, very young teams are achieving something that at the beginning we in the major teams some years ago. Uh, really, really, it was really a hard work, but now yeah. with the educational resources, I think it's easier for the new teams. So it will boost the development of robotics. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for your assistance, and hopefully, like we have uh, more chance to work with you later on. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> okay, so we have another type of jury member, which is from the industry, but unfortunately, I think like only two of them appear today. So can I call again, like um, Fui and Lucia? Maybe you can take your turns, and um, uh, yeah, not just uh, introduce yourself, but say something about the competition. So from the point of view of uh, industry, so is uh, Fui or Lucia still around? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. So maybe you can give us some opinion about the competition just now. <laughs> Although I know like you more familiar with Pepper. But how about in general, uh, AI robotics development? Okay, I think I'm gonna just uh, talk about the uh, competition and especially the part I really appreciate. I think for the uh, uh, RoboCup Education at Home Challenge, I really appreciate the part that we combine the uh, training mm -hmm. and the competition together, which is really uh, uh, valuable for the team, especially the entry level team that needs to build up the needed experience uh, to enter into the door of uh, AI robotics. So that is the part I really appreciate. And uh, uh, really thank, thanks, Jeffrey. You've been spending a lot of time in Welcome. preparing Welcome. for the workshop and put the things together. So, yeah. Right. Very okay, solid, thanks. Solid thanks. Work. Um, uh, this is a view from the industry. <laughs> so the education and also the, the competition actually uh it's very helpful i think to 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 make uh the industry more active i think like especially like softbank robotics have been putting a lot of effort in building 
a commercial based or mass produced um, service robot. Yeah, so hopefully like, we can work more after this uh, in our at home education uh, activities. All right, thanks, Wei. So lastly, can I have um, Lucia? Uh, yes, and the Jupiter robot before is also taking part in the online courses. And we found that many students have many um, motivation to learn the learn in the course of uh, robotics. And uh, it's also give us a lot uh, of uh, encouragement. So uh, Jupiter robot uh, will continue to work on the development uh, of artificial intelligence technology and uh, it's very much. important yes okay thank you thank you lucia and thank you jupiter robot for your generous support in our activities okay so with yeah, that i have finished um, my opening ceremony content so i would like to switch back so um uh, david i would like to pass the screen back to you and our time just nice Okay, so everyone, now we are switching back to competition mode again. Okay. Right. So I hope everyone ready. So we will start at 10, which is now is uh, 10 p.m. Just nice. I hope UBC, you are ready. Okay, so let's start. Um, is jury, every, every jury is okay? I hope the jury should be okay. Okay. Right, so we will start the next team. So the next team is like, um, okay, I need to off my video. Right, and I need my list so the next team is open platform open category uh, team ubc open robotics from the university of british columbia canada right so i'll pass the mic to you and you may begin your presentation 10 minutes seven minutes presentation three minutes q a you may begin now uh, we can't hear you turn on your mic hi can you hear me okay, okay so I'm going to start with a technical presentation of what we're going to do, and then I'm, we're going to move on to some bits and pieces of the demonstration. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, just like, let me know if there's uh, any er errors with that. So can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, sorry, I guess this is technically seven. Um, so we're team UBC Open Robotics, and um, I'm going to start with the background and motivation for the task we're going to do. So uh, our motivation stems from the COVID-19 restrictions. So right now, with all the restrictions going on, um, a lot of restaurants have transformed so that social distancing becomes the new norm. So that means that most restaurants move to more of pickup and delivery uh, and very minimal face-to-face -face interaction. And because of these drawbacks, um, there's been some issues. So there's been a lot of orders lost or stolen. There's been difficulty of communicating or providing feedback. And the measures are not always followed because of these difficulties. So we decided to use our robot to tackle these issues. So we made um, a server kind of robot um, that we're going to demonstrate some of the things. So. Our ideal task setup, unfortunately, this is not going to be exactly what happens today because we ran into some issues. Um, but our ideal task setup is as follows. So essentially, the robot would take orders from the first customer in line. Um, the order, uh, sorry, the, ro the robot would repeat the order, confirms it, and then it would go to the kitchen, repeat the order to the workers, and then the client's name. And then the, when the food is ready, the kitchen worker would call the robot. It would pick up the item and then deliver it back to the customer. And then it would just wave goodbye. Um, so, so that's ideally what we were going for. Unfortunately, we ran into some issues. So we, we're not going to see everything exactly here. Um, and then last thing, um, just some future ideas for us. So one of the things we thought of is having better multitasking. So that means taking orders from more than one customer um, and then not needing help of kitchen workers. So that means just like using object recognition to actually pick up the food by uh, autonomously. And lastly, just more national interactions. Uh, so Nick, do you want to just like, just tell them what we're going to see now? Yes, hi. Uh, so I'm one of the colleagues for UBC Open Robotics, the software team. And right now, uh, we're going to show your our, uh, live demonstration. 
unfortunately, due to restrictions, uh, we were not able to get one of our lab spaces. So we're doing it in one of our homes. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. May I place an order? May I place an order? May I place an order? Can I have your name and order, please? My name is Nick and I like spaghetti. My name is Nick and I like spaghetti. Your name is Nick and you want to order spaghetti. Please approach so that I may scan your face. Face scan successful. Please wait for your order. Ask the question. Do we start it? Uh, can we just start the demonstration? That's possible. Yeah, the time is yours. You can do anything you like. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah, you can start. May I place an order? May I place an order? Certainly. Can I have your name and order, please? My name is Nick and I like chicken. Your name is Nick and you want to order chicken. Please approach so that I may scan your face. Face scan successful. Please wait for your order. Okay, teams, your seven minutes is up. So now you can still continue, but if the jury got question. You need to answer the question. Jury, please start us question. Our of chicken for Nick. We'll stop the, the presentation here. Yeah. Jury, do you have any question? If the jury don't have any question, you can continue to add any information if you like. Uh, yeah, we would actually like to demonstrate some of uh, the ARM functionalities. Jury, do you have any question? If they have no question, you can you can do yeah you can add information no problem. Jury, please ask question. This is a Q and A uh, time. Um. So we weren't able to demonstrate everything, but uh, if there are no questions, we can maybe elaborate a little bit more on, yes. Uh, sorry? Yes. Yes, we can elaborate maybe more a little bit on the process and then maybe there you have some questions. So originally we're essentially uh, just using some speech recognition uh, to initiate the, the program. 
where the, the client goes and asks for the, for the TurtleBot to place an order. And then the TurtleBot um, uh, collects, uh, collects data from like the, the new client in order to train a, a facial recognition model um, on real time. And then after that, we have a, a pre-trained uh, uh, model using uh, for the server, which is in, in this case, uh, uh, my partner, in which case the, the turbo just uh, now turns around till it, uh, till it finds the face of the, um, of the server, in which case it goes towards there to place the order. And once this is done, it repeats, the, it repeats this process by turning around back again in order to find the client that has just uh, um, recognized and then goes back to the client to deliver the food. One more minute, jury yes. members, uh, do you yeah. have anything to ask? I have a question. In your documentation, you have a handle detector for yes. the bar. Do you use color features or? No, we're using actually units. We, we trained the, the bag using a, a unit architecture, CNN. So you train with one kind of, of handle and you can detect any kind of, of handle? Um, yes, ideally, yes. Oh, interesting, okay. Okay, so time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dims. Right, thanks for your presentation. And we would like to uh, invite the next team. Thank you. Thank you as well. Right, so the next team will be, um, so this team is open platform, open category. So the next team is open platform junior category. So the next team is junior category. Jury is junior category. And the team name is uh, Bishop Knight. Uh, Bishop Knight open platform teams. Okay. So they are from the Bishop School from USA. Right. So you may begin your presentation now. Thank you. Um, so here we have, um, it is the um, our robot arm. Um, so if we go ahead and um, we have a, a pedestrian detection running right here. Um, and let, if I, Elizabeth, let Kelly set the scene. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Kelly. I'm just going to set the scene really quickly for you. So say you're in a restaurant and you want to order a drink. Our robot will act as a waiter and come to you to request your order. When you decide what you would like, our robot will get your drink and bring it back to you. And there's lots of options for what drink you want. All right, so um, uh, like I was saying, there is the pedestrian detection right there. Um, and if I'm uh, standing back here, you can actually see um, that it does put a bounding box around me so it's uh, detecting where I am. Um, and, uh, Ashwin, do you want to talk about how that would, um, help with navigation? Sure. Okay. So the bounding, the bounding box originally was meant to be integrated into the mapping and navigation systems of the robot to avoid both mapping people and running into them. Unfortunately, the navigation components weren't completed. So we have the pedestrian detection just working on its own here now. Um, and then if we zoom out a little bit, so um, we can um, see this robot um, arm and it will wait until I give it a command such as bring me a Coke, please. Sorry, um, bring me a Coke. I will bring you that Coke right away. And then it responds. So this is where object detection would be um, integrated and um, it would be scanning uh, for the Coke. Uh, we do have a, a working object detection model, but we were unable to put it into the final model. Um, so this would grab the Coke can and then bring it over to the user and let go. So the object detection model, we, we implemented an object detection model in TensorFlow that successfully could differentiate between different types of cans, different drinks, including Coke, Pepsi, Red Bull, water, and Sprite. Unfortunately, the model couldn't run 
quick enough on the Judson Nano that we're currently using with the webcams. So while trying to port it over to the laptop to run there instead, we couldn't do that in time. So instead, we just have it turning to a spe specified point currently, but it can't successfully tell between different types of drinks. Um, Charles, I mean, you could talk a little bit about the um, the three D printed components all throughout the robot. So we have sure. um, here this robotic um, claw and also these wire leads. So we three D designed a couple of components to improve upon the arm that we already had built before. So we needed an updated claw so that it was able to actually pick up a cup or a can, which was not a box shape. And we also needed some different th like sensor housing for the object detection. Sen ah, sorry, sensor, and just some wire leads to clean up the entire robot arm because it was having trouble moving around with all the wires on it. We actually ended up running into some snags when we were trying to design things over a long distance because we couldn't measure things precisely from from the robot. If Because I was doing the design, I didn't have access to the robot. It was also hard to test things and test different models since we had to get them to another person, print it out, try it and then wait for feedback. So that was a roadblock in trying to design a working grip, but it did improve the robot in the end. Then Elizabeth, can you talk a little bit about how you're doing speech? And then I'll talk about what I've tried to do. Yeah, so um, I'm using uh, Pocket Sphinx to do the speech detection and then um, the built-in sound play um, to do the speech synthesis. Um, and those are talking to one another via um, subscribers and publishers. Um, and that is also how the whole um, system is able to understand uh, which drink the, um, the user wants and uh, the action of um, bringing that drink. So that would uh, kind of trigger the whole um, system of, uh, of navigating to the drink and then um, grabbing the drink and bringing it to the person. I worked on an alternate model for the speech recognition. I tried two things. For the first attempt, I was using scale and value sift features on spectrograms. That, while it produced a better than random result, wasn't quite good enough. Instead, for the next attempt, I was using spectrograms into an image classification program. I um, wrote and trained in TensorFlow, which was producing greater than 90% accuracy, but because of a lack of training data for the specific words that we needed, we ended up just going with this model that we're currently using. Um, so I guess we could turn it over in case there are any questions um, that you guys have for us. Yes, so now it's already like seven minutes, or seven minutes uh, is up. Uh, so um, jury members, do you have any question for the teams? Yeah, if no question, the teams, you can add more information if you like. While waiting Hello, for the team member to... Yeah, okay, Luis. Yes. Thank, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting. So I can see you are designing uh, your own arm. So have you tested uh, another designs, for example, using two arms for more complex manipulation or changing the, the fingers the, to, to have more... more uh, freedom into complex objects? So we actually had a few different designs for the rail grip claw that we're using to actually pick up the cup. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to implement all of them since we have very limited ability to 3D print new things because of how long it takes and limited access to the robot because of social distancing. So we do have a few different designs that we, that we attempted to implement, but we ended up just going with the one that we have there. So that's kind of the one design that we have for now. And in addition, um, it, this design does fit the uh, standard can size. So we did go with it, even though it doesn't have fingers or anything fancy mm -hmm. to uh, grab it better, but it allows, it still allows for it to function. So since the object detection was trained on multiple different beverages, it's actually able to pick up a, a, any order that you give it since it's able to pick up the standard can size. And the main part of the the main part of the arm is a standard uh, Phantom uh, Pincher X from Trossen. 
Oh, okay, thank you. We have one more minute for question and answer. Yeah. Anything uh, to I have ask? A, I have a question. Yeah, Amy. I think you guys also worked on the body. Can you tell us a little more about what you have done with the total bot? Um, so we completed most of the rest of a robot. It's kind of looks like a Roomba, except for extended really tall, um, to be able to reach, um, like people height kind of, and pass ranks. But I don't know if Elizabeth has that robot with her or not. Um, yeah, so the base, um, we were unable to, um, finish the, um, slam, uh, detection. So the, um, we decided to not include the um, the base because it was um, unable to move without um, bumping into things, um, and we decided to prioritize the arm instead. Okay, right. Thank you, Tim. So your time is up. So thanks a lot for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we have completed all 14 teams uh, for our open platform finals today. Right, thanks a lot for all the teams for your presentation and also thanks to all the jury that stay here for almost two hours with us for all the teams uh, presentation. And um, that's actually conclude the activities today. Right, so um, before we uh, end the session, so can I like if there is any feedback from the jury members that you would like to tell the audience or tomorrow's team uh, to be careful or what they have to take notes uh, as a summary uh, for from the jury. Or Amy, can you like summar summarize and, and give a conclusion on behalf of all the jury members? I guess you should probably ask the sponsor Ah uh, no no I mean like in technical technical stuff as uh, sponsors I I think it's fine <laughs> I mean for the for the technical like if you have any feedback that now you want to give to the teams well I just want to point out that um you know depending on where you are and how um what what kind of constraints that you have the preparation is is I assume it was really really difficult because you know even the um open category, you, you don't have an access to the robot. So um, I think the what you have presented is quite um, amazing that uh, you can do that much work without physically actually being together or going to uh, work on your robot. So I want to just um, point out that Part, but also the the teams that have an access to robots, um, that again the the accomplishment that you have made is also impressive. And Thank you. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I think I'm especially talking about the junior teams because I didn't expect the junior teams to be able yeah. to do that much work. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. And and yeah, so as a, as a summary, so are any juries that you have any words that you want to say before we do the closing? But of course, don't leave. We need to do some meetings, technical. Uh, but I would like to close uh, the session for the public, uh, for the audience. Anything um, from the jury side? No more, right? So and anything from the technical? Uh, I don't think we have any any more things. Uh, all right. So um, just... Uh, for the for the how to say uh for the reminder um so tomorrow we will uh have another round of this final but um it will be for the standard platform which is the pepper link right uh the time is uh, similar the starting time is the same and then the how the way to join is the same so uh for all of you uh please stay with us and come again to see tomorrow and for the open Platform teams, um, um, I, I understand that now you have a lot of mixed bidding, but tomorrow we will have the award ceremony and we have all the sharing session and, and interaction. So I hope you still come tomorrow to join 
uh, the event and have a look on how the teams perform uh, even though they are like presenting in a very different platform than the one that you develop but um, I think the key is uh, to get as much as some um, competition ex uh, ex uh, how to say competition exposure and also competition experience that is very important not just to develop the robot and yeah but in order to compete in this kind of platform especially now we are using a very different platform so uh, you will learn a lot even like look at the other standard platform performance uh, presentation so i would like to call everyone to come back tomorrow to uh, continue uh, the second half of our event and also for the audience uh, tomorrow we will still continue the voting right but tomorrow the voting will be for the standard platform right so we will calculate uh, the, the the vote uh, tonight and we will announce the winner tomorrow so tomorrow we will have a very similar uh, schedule so we'll start at 7 uh, GMT uh, GMT plus 8 uh, and and you can convert yourself <laughs> for your for your time zone uh, then we will start uh, the sequence like we will introduce the jury and we will straight away start the, the competition right so very similar like today but what different is tomorrow we will have the award ceremony at the end okay so please don't uh, please do come back again and join us for the award ceremony and one things I can review here is like our award ceremony will be very interesting okay so please come and join us uh, for the award ceremony as well okay so with that I would like to conclude um, our session today so thank you everyone to um, join us thank you all the juries for all the jury duties and also all the um, audience and also thanks all the teams for your great cooperation so that we can smoothly finish all the uh, final judging today right so thanks a lot and i will see you tomorrow